This year, like most years, I'm participating in a programming puzzle game called Advent of Code. Each day for 25 days, starting on December 1st, a new programming puzzle is released at midnight EST. The goal for most people is to complete the puzzle each day. Some people focus on speed, trying to be the first to solve the puzzle and get additional points, while others focus on learning a new programming language. Personally, I make a video each day for each puzzle, and I focus my efforts on explaining the features of the Rust programming language that are relevant to each puzzle, covering different crates, testing approaches, and more. So concretely, what is Advent of Code? And more importantly, should you participate in Advent of Code this year? As we can see here, Advent of Code is 25 programming puzzles, which each have two parts. One puzzle is released each day, and once you complete part one of a given day's puzzle, you can continue to do part two, which is usually heavily based on what you did in part one. Each day you'll click on a new link, and you'll get the new day's problem. The time investment to solve each problem varies, but generally speaking, the first problem is easier than the last. There's usually about one problem every year that makes most people's heads spin, but the vast majority of problems are solvable using no special knowledge of puzzles or fancy computer science, and every problem can be completed on a regular computer. In most problems, you're given some input, like you can see here on the left, and it's your job to write a program that takes that input and does something with it to produce your answer. For this particular problem, my answer was 815. This input will start out as a test input and will be revealed to you on each day. So if I click on my puzzle input here, I will get a file effectively with a large amount of input. For the test input, you'll usually be given a solution. This is what you'll write your program against. When you think you've worked out the problem, you'll move on to using the real day one input, which as we saw before, can be much, much longer. Processing this input with a computer is usually just fine, but processing it by hand is often way too long. The answers you submit are always the result of your program. So if the program you wrote produced the number, say 815, that's the number you'd put into the answer key. Once you complete part one, you get one star, and then an additional part two unveils underneath it, after which you get another gold star. Each of the problems, as you might've been able to tell by now, is phrased as a word problem. People who are very experienced in doing these kinds of puzzles don't really even need to read the words, but they often give a storyline background for what's going on. In this case, we're dealing with elves and their IDs, but this storyline will progress from day one to day 25. If you're considering doing it, it starts on December 1st at midnight, and here are some things I suggest doing. First, decide how you want to approach Advent of Code. Are you using it to learn a new language? Are you using it to complete the puzzles for the first time? Or are you going for leaderboard times? Knowing what you're trying to do ahead of time will help you set expectations for what you want to do with the problems when they appear. Some people do only the first part every day, some people do both parts, and of course, if you're going for a leaderboard time, you're competing against people who have been doing that exact thing for, oh, nine years now. Secondly, you can use the input as a way to practice with your favorite parsing library or become familiar with parsing. Writing dot split on a string is just fine for the purposes of solving the problems, so don't worry if you don't want to do this, but you'll also get 25 days worth of input. Some, like this, will be actually parsable in an interesting parser, and some will just be lists of numbers and things like that. But you'll get 25 days worth of input that you can use to build your parser writing skills. Third, you can build some test cases. Given the input that we saw earlier for this very problem, we also get the answers for each of the things our program is supposed to be doing. So you can use this as an opportunity to get better at writing test cases or setting up that new testing library. I also wouldn't worry about getting everything done if this is your first time through. Many people have other obligations, work, school, and other side projects, and those don't stop during December. So don't feel bad if you can only do, say, one problem each week. The problems will be available forever. So I could click on number 19 here and just get right back into it, even though this is almost a full two years later. So if you're enjoying it, you have all the time in the world to get this done. And lastly, don't be afraid to walk away from the computer or even skip a day entirely. Sometimes you'll just get stuck or get busy. If this happens and you're stuck, stop, take a nap, grab some food, do something else, come back to it later, or feel free to just skip the day and pick up tomorrow. This is for enjoyment purposes. You're supposed to have fun doing this. So if you're not enjoying a particular puzzle and what it's asking you to do, just skip it and do tomorrow's instead. 
If you've decided to do this, you might be interested in knowing where to go for help. Don't be afraid to look at other people's answers. This is generally about learning, whether that's learning a new programming language or learning how to solve these puzzles more efficiently. If you're looking for a community of Rust developers to practice with, join the Rust Adventure Discord server, link in the description. If you're stuck on a particular day or part, the Advent of Code subreddit tends to be the most active, with the widest breadth of answers, and there's a thread posted every day that everybody posts their answers to. So if this is your first time doing Advent of Code, maybe choose a language you already know, or be prepared to not complete certain days if you're picking up a new language and doing Advent of Code for the first time. And finally, the best thing to do is to have a support network. So find some people who are also doing it, grab your friends and do it with them. And if you're planning to do it this year, let me know in the comments. I'll be doing videos, as I said, every day this year. So even if you're not actually doing the problems yourself, I hope you'll come back and join us. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you on Friday.